Tenakoto, 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 Katoa. Thank you very much to, uh, for everybody being here today. I think Minister Nash mentioned uh, um, uh, how excited he was he to be here, and Peter Berg certainly mentioned that this may be the biggest forestry conference uh, ever. It's, uh, the organisers should be proud, and all of you who are here to support uh, the forestry sector should also be proud of a turnout, uh, both of people here and the speakers willing to come and talk to it. So uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Um, uh, I'd like to share with you today some of the things that the Forest Service has been doing. Um, I'd just like to make, make the point that most of you will uh, from your childhood remember the Forest Service. The Forest Service didn't exist in its current form until five years ago. In fact, it wasn't called the Forest Service five years ago. It was called Te Uruaka. It was renamed uh, when Minister Nash came uh, to become Minister to Te Uruaka New Zealand Forest Service because we are looking to increase again the service that we provide to New Zealand and the sector. In fact, we will be six times the size we were five years ago very soon, um, just showing the level of, uh, of work in front of us and the importance that this government sees in forestry. Um, so I'll cover, cover some of the things uh, that we have done uh, recently, a little bit of a look back at the One Million Trees program and some of the things that we've done, and also outline how we're working in partnership with many of the stakeholders across the forestry and wood processing uh, sector, tangata whenua, iwi, businesses and organisations, even schools, communities, and most of that is focused on how to plant trees, with a great deal of focus on how to plant native trees, not just pine. We uh, we like all trees. Um, and, uh, and I'll also talk about something that others have mentioned previously about the creation of our advisory service, um, something, something that's uh, coming back to where we used to be and is going to be needed as we move forward. Um, there's been a lot of talk about the, uh, about the, uh, the emergency around climate. A lot of my speech was focused on that. For those of you who are sitting next to me, you saw me crossing lines out of saying, someone's already said that, someone's already said that. So I'm gonna cut it down and, and as the man between you and your lunch, hopefully I'll get you there on time. Um, so, um, so first off, um, I wanna talk about the, roles of, the, the role of trees. We all know what it is. And there's, but there is a rich history in New Zealand around the forestry industry um, and there is a strong connection in the national identity between forests um, uh, and the people of New Zealand. It has a critical role in our environment. That's nothing new. It always had a critical role in the environment. It's just that we need to refocus on it, particularly around soil, water quality, and the natural resources that, that it can provide. Climate change is the biggest environmental weed challenge and forests are our largest renewable resource. People forget the lowest, the largest low carbon industry in New Zealand is the forestry industry. We employ 40,000 people, mostly in the regions, and we are the largest low carbon industry in the country. We should be proud of that. Trees not only sequester carbon, but they provide the raw material to replace carbon intensive materials and fuels, heating, building materials and plastics. The forestry and wood processing se sector also exports $6.5 billion worth of products every year. My opinion, too many of those are logs. They need to be processed here, and we're doing something about that with the industry transformation plan that has been worked on over the last uh, uh, couple of years, and that'll be launched very soon. Uh, it's been developed with our partners, charting a path forward for our industry. But that's only part of what we need to do with our forest. There is, there is more that we need to do with our forests. Um, I want to also talk about, um, a little bit later, about the opportunity on rural landscapes. But first, let's have a look about funding support for native planting. Uh, many of you recall one billion trees, yes, it's still out there. And even though applications have closed, there is a whole lot of projects between now and 2028 that need to be executed against those grants. Uh, the whole aim of that in 2018 was to increase tree planting across New Zealand with a goal of reaching 1 billion additional trees by 2028. It is a combination of both existing planting and new planting and includes projects and initiatives uh, that will deliver that 1 billion trees. We are on track to deliver it. 
we have a tree tracker. It's on our website. Uh, it constantly goes up. So, uh, so we are on track. I think one of the points that needs to be uh, understood is that 78% of the trees that we are funding are native and only 22% are exotic and not all those exotics are pine. Um, so uh, I totally agree with previous speakers. There is more to exotics than pine. Um, uh, as of September uh, this year, or the end of September this year, which is only a few weeks ago, we had funded 34.5 million trees, and 31.7 million of them are already planted. Just over $166 million of the fund was allocated to 670 projects to plant trees or to remove barriers to tree planting. The focus of both, of both the program and the fund is to make it easier to plant the right tree in the right place for the right purpose, and over the last three years has contributed to key environmental, economic and social outcomes for New Zealand. Both indigenous and exotic planting deliver a range of positive uh, benefits to landowners, particularly those wishing to diversify their land use and reduce erosion. With the closure of the One Billion Trees Fund for applications, the New Zealand Forest Service will continue to monitor and support the existing funded projects to ensure that they are successful, while also shifting our fo focus to establishing an advisory service, which I'll talk more about later. But I also want to dwell on some of the successes we've had. Funding trees is one thing, but winning our people's hearts and minds is the most fundamental thing that we need to do. We believe working with communities and schools on environmental initiatives enable our future leaders to get involved in and learn about looking after our whenua. Our Matariki Turako grants uh, provide funds for organisations such as Marae, community groups and schools to plant living memorials that honour members of their communities who brought change and distinction uh, through their work. Since its launch in 2018, Matariki Turako has funded 860,000 native trees uh, planted as living memorials at over 300 planting events nationwide. It has funded 42 schools who have planted over 58,000 native trees with their students as part of their learning program. Um, uh, it's, and it's also funded 67 schools uh, to do community plant, uh, plantings to restore forest cover. Minister Nash, sorry, I'll just keep my slides up to, to where we should be. Go to the next one. Minister Nash, pictured here with his children. Uh, as mentioned earlier, his absolute love for Arbor Day. Um, he mentioned how uh, the Forest Service swung into action ar around that, and uh, we're pleased to, pleased to say in partnering with Trees for Survival, uh, we managed to partner with 40 different schools to plant 35,000 trees. Uh, and we've also entered into, into a multi-year partnership with Trees That Count to support schools to connect native planting opportunities and build relationships. This is an important thing to build hearts and minds into our young people. And like Minister Nash, I'm old enough to remember Arbor Day um, in my childhood. Working in partnership with others isn't something new to us. It's at the core of what we do. A lot of our work involves collaborating with regional government on initiatives to support tree planting in vulnerable areas, which is especially important as we've seen in recent times due to the fact of uh, recent weather events. Uh, planting trees not only sequesters carbon, but also protects our waterways and biodiversity, and especially our way of life. One example of this is the partnership with councils uh, in, in the uh, Sustainable Land Management Hill Country Erosion Program. The Hill Country, Hill Country Erosion Program provides funding to support regional erosion control pro uh, projects that are beyond the capacity of councils to address on their own, and is the government's primary means of reducing soil loss on private land through actively partnering with councils. Loss of production land through erosion has a significant impact on the environment, economy and local communities. So while we can't prevent the storms and floods from happening, we can help mitigate against the impacts on people and livelihoods from slips and erosions, uh, by, in particular by planting trees. Erosion and the effects on hill country areas alone are estimated to cost New, Zealand, New Zealand's economy $250 to $350 million a year. Taking steps to, re to reduce erosion in the upper areas of catchments is much better than flood control structures in the lower areas, and that's why we're focused on it. Um, 
Establishing partnerships between farmers, councils and the Forest Service are fundamental to the program's success. Since 2007, more than $200 million has been invested in erosion control through the country. This includes funding from central government, councils and farmers. Um, I'm going to skip some of these things because I know we're heading for lunch, but uh, I could provide you a number of case studies uh, around the success that we've had in that um, uh, and other catchment groups through the One Billion Trees Fund, uh, where we've also uh, invested in 1.4 million trees uh, uh, with cap catchment groups uh, across New Zealand. Uh, another partnership that I know is part of the agenda here, so I'm not going to touch on it in depth, uh, is also a partnership program through One Billion Trees that looked at the total industry and how it could develop in the future. That is a key thing that I'll touch on a little bit later um, in the speech because I see there's, there's great opportunity going forward. So, where are we now? Some of you may be aware that government set out a roadmap called Fit for a Better World, accelerating our economic recovery to help New Zealand uh, rebuild stronger and better. It was focused on the primary sector uh, and by its aims is to create pathways for innovation and transformation and to incentivise and develop a strong, sustainable and low carbon economy. This vi vision includes permanently re reforesting remote, unproductive and highly erodible land with native trees which will provide a long term carbon sink while improving biodiversity and water quality. The Fit for Better World roadmap focused on three themes, productivity, sustainability and inclusivity. And I think that's really important because the, the bringing together of that uh, is what will be important for us going forward. Uh, both for the primary sector uh, as well as New Zealand. What TK uh, touched on ar around financing and inclusivity and sustainability, I think it is aligns with a fit for better world. There are a couple of sections in the, in the fit for better world plan uh, around uh, forestry and wood processing. Um, why is that important? Because we're at an important juncture. <laughs> with the Hawakarikonawa partnership delivering a potential solution to government regarding how to reduce on-farm emissions and government's response out for consultation. Now, uh, we have to understand that trees on farms are part of the solution for the future of a low-carbon economy and the New Zealand Forest Service has a role to play here. We've already heard from our colleagues at the Department of Conservation, they have, some very, um, they have a very important role to play, but we at the Ministry of Primary Industries, which the Forestry Service is part of, um, need to ensure we're planting trees for the benefit of the primary industry and the benefit of the, uh, of the environment and for New Zealand as a whole. Farms with a lower carbon footprint, less erosion and cleaner waterways are fit for a better world. A world where customers of milk and meat are going to want to know where their products that they consume have come from and what the environmental impact of those products are. But as I am the forestry part of MPI and a strong voice within MPI on, uh, shall we say, on this, and I want to see a future uh, where our indigenous forestry in industry returns as well. 100 years ago, we, we had a for, an indigenous forestry industry that was unsustainable and we did something about it. We planted some plantations. And 100 years from now, could we have an indigenous forestry industry again on private land at scale? Minister Nash talked about wanting to plant a million hectares. Could we use some of that uh, million hectares to create unique products from our New Zealand species, unique only to New Zealand? These could be high-valued products. Medicines is one example. There are plenty of other high-valued uh, products that are, that are possible to make out of New Zealand's forest. It could be done per, out of a permanent canopy forest with selective harvesting, or it doesn't necessarily need to be cut down. There is other ways of gaining revenue from permanent canopy forests. But if we don't, if we don't look at that and say, in 100 years, could we have an industry based on this, uh, we will never start. So my challenge is, should we start now? And how should we start? So my challenge is for the sector and landowners to ensure that our people and forests are fit for now and fit for the future. To help ensure that happens, the Forest Service has created two new directorates, one called Forestry Insights and the other called Forestry Engagement and Advice. 
The Forestry Engagement and Vice Directorate provides comprehensive forestry sector engagement and advice across the forestry sector. It will operate across the country in partnership with external stakeholders to deliver initiatives, programs, advice and services that create value from forestry and trees and to ensure growth, resilience and participation across the sector uh, and the forestry ecosystem. The forestry sector uh, advice locations uh, will, will be in seven, uh, 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 will deliver in some key areas, uh, advising on the benefits of trees, the forest life cycle and supply chain, connecting multiple stakeholder groups so that they are informed. This includes a variety of types of landowners and primary producers that will need information, not myths, to navigate their way through the transition to a lower emissions future. This will also include local councils as a number of legislative changes come through with respect to resource consents that may affect forestry. We will also help people understand the emissions trading scheme, something that as TK says could take three days uh, if you really wanted to understand it, and other regulations. Uh, we've often been asked, can't people get that advice already? And the answer is of course they can if they go to a professional advisor, but in some cases they just want to understand the basics before they engage someone to do it. So we already have a regionally based team. Some of them are here today, some of you may know them. Uh, we're building on that team, um, but we, this map shows where they'll be. Starting in Whangarei in the north, through Rotorua, Gisborne, Palmerston North, Nelson, Christchurch and Dunedin, these teams will service the region directly around them. In total, we'll stand up an additional 36 advisory staff over the next year. By extending and expanding our advisory service, landowners and stakeholders will receive well-informed advice and specialist targeted support. The service will provide on-the-ground support, working directly with landowners, farm foresters, local councils, even timber processors, training institute and other forestry organisations. I also want to talk about the other part, which was the Forestry Insights team. If you're going to provide advice, you need to be backed with insights and information, and that's why we created the Forestry Insights team, who will use data, research and analysis uh, to ensure this advice is backed by evidence, something that Minister Shaw was quite uh, keen on. For example, these maps provide data, have been provided through data analysis of land across Canterbury and Tairawhiti Gisborne, which is susceptible to erosion and currently used for agricultural pastoral purposes. Uh, these maps are a great example of data and research being captured by our teams, which will, will detail the land of use, uh, the type of land use, the risk of erosion, and the suitability for planting trees. You can't see where it, it's it's too small, but trust me, you can actually zoom in to actually landholder uh, levels. It brings me to my next slide, um, which is the importance of getting more trees in the ground. This is the area that a lot of people have covered before in their speech, so I'm going to, I've crossed a lot of this out. Um, we've met, what's been mentioned is the emissions reduction plan. Uh, what I really want to dwell on is what came out of Budget 22. A couple of ministers have mentioned it, as has David Rhodes, uh, and what we're doing to reduce the barriers to native forests through the Climate Emergency Relief Fund. So uh, once the emissions reduction plan and Budget 22 came out, um, uh, you can probably gain from that that the government is, uh, has determined that New Zealand's forest estate is important and it needs to expand. And they allocated $385.4 million of new funding for, for, for the forestry sector. Put that into context, that's more than the One Billion Trees Fund, okay? But it's not a funding mechanism. There's, there's five elements to it. Uh, two of which I'd look at, like to look at closer today, and that's the maximising carbon storage and developing long-term carbon sinks. Uh, there's others, inclu including the supply of woody biomass to offset the use of coal, supporting the implementation of the Industry Transformation Plan, which I uh, mentioned earlier, which will be released later this year, and, and to stand up uh, and bolster the Forestry Advisory Service, which I've already mentioned. So maximising carbon storage. This initiative will fund targeted research to support with evidence, scientific evidence, to update and expand the scope of the current ETS lookup tables. So uh, Minister Shaw was keen to say that anything that, that can 
um, uh, have an evidence base should be in the ETS. What's in the ETS, if we're going to upgrade the ETS, lookup tables need to be needs to be evidence based. And um, so we, we are looking at regionally specific research, species specific research, in order to get more target of it on, the, on what is accounted for in the emissions trading scheme. This research will also identify land where better land use management would deliver uh, significant carbon and biodiversity benefits and improving our understanding of the impact of management activities on carbon stocks, something that's been talked about before. Um, so that, you know, think about pest control, as it says up there. Note that funding also includes $11.8 million over four years for DOC, MFE and ourselves to work together uh, and research to identify land which could deliver greatest carbon and biodiversity benefits through improved management and to understand the impacts of management activities. That's killing possums, put simply, um, and other things that munch our forests. So let's look at how we can uh, best do that. The second one I want to talk about is how we're going to deal with this thing about we need heaps of trees. And if we need heaps of trees, we need heaps of seedlings. And they're expensive little buggers, I think someone said. Um, so this program came out in Budget 22 earlier this year to expand, uh, uh, to, to have a look at what are the barriers to native afforestation, uh, and that being increasing seedlings and reducing the barriers and costs for planting. This is an initial stage of a multi-stage program to support the establishment of native forests. It's not the whole solution. It's supporting research in science and, and in forestry to identify gaps and explore innovation and propagation, planting and restoration. It aims to increase knowledge and advice to support the growth of the nursery sector, including building strong partnerships with Iwi Māori. The program fun focuses on the de deployment and uptake of technology to increase supply, and, the, uh, and reduce the cost of high quality native seedlings to support native afforestation at a lower cost. It also supports the development of a long-term national strategy and action plan to grow native forests and native biodiversity in partnership with rural landowners, iwi Māori, forestry communities and, private, and the private sector. This program is in addition to the Maximising Carbon Storage pro Program, which I just outlined. Uh, the native car the, the maximising carbon storage program does something around incentives. This is looking at how we draw, draw the cost down. We've already identified some of the barriers and some of my team have been working with some of the people here on understanding that. Um, uh, you know, many of you know these barriers, you know, access to seed sources at, sale, uh, at scale, sorry, costs of seedlings, manual propagation practices that make plants and planting at scale expensive. Um, we know that hard, they're hard to grow uh, and have a high failure rate. So this work will look at how do we address all those things. So um, some of the other key things we'll look at is establishing appropriate forest cover on difficult margin and erosion prone land and how we can reduce the cost uh, and reduce the risk. Um, I'm just mindful of time, so uh, I'll, uh, up there on the screen is the program's uh, broken into sort of four elements. A review of the nursery sector and engaging with the nursery sector is already underway. Um, uh, some of that has, has started and will roll out over, over the coming months. Um, uh, we want to understand the, better what the nursery sector is now and, and, and understand what the solutions are uh, to increase availability, to increase supply, reduce the cost. Uh, there is work uh, under the, the Forestation Research Program, which will procure research, including Mataranga Māori research, to ensure, uh, to, to ensure we address knowledge gaps, especially regarding seed collection, plant propagation and establishment for both regeneration as well uh, as active planting. Work is underway already on developing a long-term term policy uh, strategy and action plan, a comprehensive approach to incentivise native afforestation, including options for improving financial and non-financial returns. You heard about some of that from Minister Shaw around biodiversity, and for addressing remaining supply barriers to help deliver the government's climate change and biodiversity objectives. If we need a lot of trees and we need a lot of seedlings, we might need a lot of people to put them in the ground. Uh, so we need, might need to address that as well. Um, so um, 
We'll be investigating some of the commercial te technologies that are available to accelerate production of native trees uh, at the moment. Um, this is something that uh, I think will be part of uh, will be important uh, for us to understand is how we can use uh, automation technology, for instance, in the nursery sector in order to uh, reduce cost. Uh, just a bit of a plug, um, there is a survey uh, engagement stage about to happen uh, with the support of the NZPPI uh, and other nursery partners to, under to build our knowledge. That's starting now. Some of you should expect that survey, I think, next week or in earlier, early November to go out. I encourage you to complete uh, the survey and information uh, and then therefore will be uh, really well informed this, this information is looking to, uh, to identify the location and nature of nurseries within New Zealand, understand current opportunities and gaps, identify barriers pre uh, preventing nurseries from incre increasing production of tall native tree species specifically, uh, which is uh, quite, quite a challenge, and understand areas of interest for Māori partners, uh, as well as provide an evidence base for the sector's supply capability. Uh, this project will be working well into next year to, uh, and, and we uh, intend to work with you. Uh, uh, there'll be a large part of engagement with, uh, uh, coming up over the next year for us to understand these barriers, so I encourage you to work with our team on that. To, con to conclude, Reflecting on the work we've done to support native planting in New Zealand, our aspirations still remain. We want to encourage planting and for that planting to be in the right places for the right reasons. We want to continue and support income diversification along with environmental benefits for landowners that are interested in planting trees. We need to work with Māori across the whole forestry system as landowners, community leaders, investors and guardians of the environment. The future of forestry needs to embrace these opportunities as well as the diverse range of interests and values that exist across across New Zealand uh, and, the uh, and, and the future types of forest that we need to deliver. I believe our future is bright. The opportunities and possibilities for the future and our sector are exciting. They can be both a prosperous and environmentally sustainable future if we work together to find out how we can achieve that. Thank you.